It has begun. Okay, let's do the little quick little posting thingamajiggers. Took a second longer there than I wanted to. But off we go. And that's it, that's all. Okay. Alright, hopefully uh, I can get this thing checking out on my phone. Now, the mission tonight is not to save the galaxy. It is not to defeat the Prothoran Scourge. It is not to take out our enemies in the Federation. It is not to take out the fanatic purifiers that are neighboring our empire. It is to make sure that my microphone is in fact working and I actually have it no, turned on this time. That was so embarrassing. I didn't even find out until I was uh, trimming down the video, preparing to... Well, the one that I streamed last Friday, I should say. Uh, it wasn't until I was trimming down the video in my uh, editing software, and I'm going through it, and I was like, huh, that was a long period where I didn't talk, and then I skipped to a part where I knew I was talking, and I was like, I didn't, I'm not hearing myself. Oh my god. My mic was off the whole time, wasn't it? Yep, sure enough, it was. Good job, Moby. You the man. You, you so smart. Right now, uh, I'm not too sure what's happening right now. Oh. Fingers cr Fingers crossed. Uh, but, duh, let's close that off. Why does the Twitch app suck so much on phones? I don't know. Silence, no, we can hear you. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> uh, I can't hear myself. I don't like the Twitch app on the phone anymore, man. I can't watch while following chat. It's just, the chat's there, and that's it. Kind of lame. But, hey. Uh, I will take your word for it that you can hear me this time. And I've checked about four times to make sure that the little button toggler thingy slider thingamabob on my headset is actually in the on position and not in the muted position. That was extremely embarrassing and frustrating when I found that out because there was a whole period there. Like people were talking in the chat a little bit and I was replying. Somebody commented, man, the Dyson Sphere looks cool. And I was like, yeah, I know. It's just the frame, but it looks pretty sweet. You should see it later on. And I start babbling for the next 10 minutes about how cool it looks while it's building. And you can see the, you can see the solar panels being added on to it and stuff like that. And I went back and I was like, man, I responded to people all evening and we talked about some cool stuff and nobody heard anything. There was, I guarantee there was like two or three tips that I gave throughout the evening and I don't even remember what they were. Yeah, that's why I have issues streaming on Twitch with Xbox because we have no live chat on stream. Um... Yeah, on your... It's the same on PS4. You can change it on the PS4, though, so that there's a big vertical block on the right-hand side. And that shows you the uh, the chat box, essentially. But there's also a little thing that'll pop up. Uh, like The only thing that shows up on the, on the little box on in, uh, when you're streaming directly off of your console. On the Xbox, you just get a little blue uh, rectangle uh, in a certain spot on your screen... Uh, where you determine where it goes, and it kind of blocks some of like, like if it's right in, in a bad spot on the UI, it blocks what you're trying to see there. Uh, but on the PS4, it's kind of nice. You get a little black area thing whenever new viewers pop in, it reappears shortly, um, showing you that you know a bunch of new people jumped in, and when somebody posts a new comment in the chat, it reappears again and lets you know that there are people talking and stuff like that, which is cool. Whereas on Xbox, it basically just says um, how many viewers you quote unquote have. Like it's not, it doesn't update very accurately. <laughs> uh, how many minutes you've been streaming and whether or not you have a, whether or not you're broadcasting your headset and your um, what's it called, your webcam. Anyways, uh, back to the nation of. McGruber. All right, let's let's do this. Mixer pops the chat up on screen. PS4 is great straight to YouTube and can see everything. 
Uh, I didn't know that. I would ne uh, personally, I would never stream straight to YouTube. I know there's people that do that do the, this kind of crap more for a living and whatnot. I know there's well, not really more for a living, but they do, they do it way more than I do. I know there's people that do it, and you know whatever. Everybody does things that works for them. Um, what are we doing? We have sixty-two thousand. Ah, here we go. Okay, 766 days remaining for the Dyson Sphere frame. I forgot how long it takes for us to build a mega structure in this particular playthrough. I was just uh, throughout throughout the weekend. I was doing uh, a lot of the one cha the one planet challenge playthrough that I'm doing, where I've got living metal and master builders, and it takes like a thousand days to build a section of a mega structure. And uh, it, like it's done so quickly that I don't have anywhere near enough min minerals to do the next section. Anyways, enough babbling. Okay, so here, Pythoran Scourge. Uh, looks like these guys are about to lose their last planet to the Scourge. This is the Savix Cast Remnant. Uh, one of their planets is infested. The other one is being invaded, more than likely. Now, the problem is that the Pythoran Scourge is so big right now. Um, uh, let's go to the situation log here. They have 74 infested worlds. That jumped up about 20. Snap, crackle, glock. <laughs> I like that. That's clever. Um, because, like, in the last chapter alone, they infested about another 20 worlds. The problem with... I should have looked this up exactly what it does previously. But the pro, if I recall right, the problem with the Scourge is that they... I believe they get more fleets as they infest more worlds, is what the deal is. Um, I forgot to read that before I got in here because I was going to comment on it, but uh, that's okay. Um, so we've got our 130 battleships chilling, raring to go. We have 63,000 minerals, uh, which is more than enough for building the next part of the Dyson Sphere. So um, now you couldn't you couldn't hear it, but I said that in the in the last part of this game, I would like to build up. Uh, you, if you watched it, even though you couldn't hear what I was saying, I built a cor uh, no, not Corvette, a cruiser assembly yard in just about every spaceport that we have in our empire. And the idea is I want to build up about 40 or 50 cruisers as a kind of secondary fleet. What, we do, what we're going to do is because our battleships can hold off multiple fleets, not at the same time, but you know one after the other, uh, they can fend off Prothoran's uh, military fleets pretty easily. I'm thinking we'll park our battleships here in the Gine in the Guinegan system, and then what we'll do is we'll get our cruisers to try and swoop down through the Hanmer Enlightened Kingdom and maybe even the the Yalon Guardians and start coming in either from this part of the galaxy and start getting to infested worlds like here in Chi, Chi Draconis or Tuaris, uh, or into this part of the galaxy. And there were there were a couple here. There, we've got Tayai. And then now in Astinda and Gothra, there's a few infested worlds in that sec in that area too. Uh, they can they can zip in. Uh, it's like this this area would be better to do it because there's way more infested worlds in this little arm of the galaxy. Our cruisers can zip in while the battleships are drawing Prothoran fleets towards them over here. Our cruisers can be over here and should for the most part be able to uh, cleanse a couple worlds. Look at all that juice there are four prothoran fleets right there i would not take those on at all not if my life depended on it uh anyways unfortunately this means that uh we're gonna have to go to war with the hanmer enlightened kingdom because well and their allies um because they don't like us they have closed off their uh their borders to us. In fact, that whole federation that we used to be a part of really dislikes us now. Um, so, you know, whatever. Uh, let's see. Does anybody have a fleet that can really stand up to us? No, not really. So I'm, I'm a little adamant to go to war with them just so we can open their borders uh, because it's very possible that, you know, that'll gear up some of these other... Um, empires to be like, oh, well, now we're going to attack you. And then they send in little dinky fleets of, you know, like 12 corvettes and whatnot just to harass my mining stations and stuff. Uh, because that would be extremely irritating. Um, how is it that I don't have a... Is this terraformable? 
Oh, it's being terraformed. Right, 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 right. I forgot about that. There is... I can put a mining station for two... Two engineering points. Well, whoop de doo Oh my god, two points of engineering. Oh my god, we're going to finish all our projects so fast now. Um, anyways, I think that's going to have to be the plan, though. So let's let's continue. I've been wasting enough time for ten minutes already. Uh, we get to, we still have a lot of planets in our uh, borders that we could colonize a lot with, you know, I should say a lot of systems with habitable worlds. But most of them are like small and crappy. Twelve tiles, thirteen tiles, fourteen tiles. That that one's got a twenty-one tile desert world here in uh, Quenus, Quenus. Quenus? We'll go with that. Quenus. Um, so this one wouldn't be a bad pick for colonizing because it's, it's a 21 tile world. Uh, and we could turn that into something very useful. With another Dyson Sphere on the way, we probably wouldn't need to make it... We probably would not... Let me just be clear. We probably would not need to make it a uh, an energy producing world. We could definitely use more minerals. You can never have enough mineral production. <laughs> I guess. Um, so, yeah, maybe if we got a 13th uh, core sector system, which we'll get in 31 months. I think that I think that'll be the plan. Or, wait a second, hold on. If I recall right, we have a 25-tile world here in Stebnar. Oh, no, that's a 15-tile world. Uh, oh, here it is. Uh, in, what is that? Ophiogilia. Ophiogilia, yep. That's easy to say. Ophiogilia. Um, here's a 25-tile world. Not a lot of tiles, not, not a lot of natural minerals on these tiles. Uh, but it would be quite good to colonize this and turn it to whatever we want. Um, throwing on a whole bunch of uh, Newtonians on it. We could gene tailor them so that they produce a lot of minerals. Uh, just like we've done on several other planets. Uh, where we've gene tailored for specifically for production of certain um, a certain resource uh, we've done that several times on some of our planets um, how is it that oh yeah I only did six armies so why is there a little slider saying that there's more whatever um, let's see so uh, we recruited a few armies because I also mentioned that there is another world of primitives and where are they we have an observation post above them here they are Okay, in Bajiol, there is a second habitable world, but it has primitives on it. And what we're going to do is we are going to invade them with our armies, because all that's here is a couple militia groups. In the very lot bottom left, you can only see about four of them. They only have a few militia groups, so those are not very strong. One for one, they don't really hold up very well against armies. Um, so... That means... We're going to invade them. Construction complete. We'll, we'll probably force them to go away. Uh, what did we just build? Oh, yeah. Um, we'll probably force them to go away somewhere else. The previous uh, primitive world that we invaded, they, they all left our empire. And they went to, what was it, Fushro or something? Yeah, there was a planet called Fushro. I don't know where it is. Don't care. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, they're like they're gone, and now that I once I terraform that planet, um, we can have some Newtonians uh, move in, and that's another planet for us. Not taking up a core sector system, thankfully, because it is in uh, it's in a system where we already have a world, which is pretty cool. Okay, so transport fleet ten. Uh, we don't need a general. Definitely do not need a general. Uh, I don't think there's planetary. No, there isn't. Hang on. What do we got here? Savix cast relic claimers have closed their borders to us. You know what? Uh, ooh, 30 influence to land our armies. We'll turn them hostile against us. Should we proceed? Yes. Don't care. So uh, let, let, let me just uh, clear this up. The Savix cast reclaimers have closed their borders to us, which is this one system right here, which they're about to lose anyways because it's being infested by the Scourge. The last planet here is Boundary. <laughs> Let's take a look-see here. Uh, can we see what's going on? No, not really. Planet modifiers. Guy world, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I 
They're likely to attack us. The ancient precursor state of Savas Castor Clamors has met its final demise at the hands of its enemies. What, what the fall of this once great empire will mean for the galactic politics remains to be seen. Precursor Empire defeated. The war between the Precursor Empires has ended with the destruction of one of the combatants, but not at the hands of their old rival. Whether it was due to the war weakening them or simply due to the strength of the younger races, the destruction of a Precursor Empire at the hands of their supposed lessers has changed the situation considerably. Now the question remains, will the Valdari mediators be able to avoid the fate of their ancient foe, or does this defeat signal the dawn of a new age in the galaxy? Again, it remains to be seen. Everybody's falling to the Prothoran Scourge, so, you know, whatever. Grunt thirst. <laughs> that just reminds me of that goofy little line. What was it? Oh, somebody opened their borders. Valdari Mediators opened their borders. Then the Visari Star Corps closed oh, their borders on... Oh, Gee, thanks. So, on Pithage Mog, the Stellar Culture Shock modifier added to Primitive Pops, drastically reducing their output for several years to come. Our armies have successfully invaded and subdued the Primitive Forces on Pithage Mog. The locals have given up all attempts at fighting back, and we have now subsumed their civilization into our empire, although, backwards as they are, it may take some time for the natives to become fully productive members of McGyvered society. The Xenos are no match for us! Dirty dirter. No, they are not. See, now... Uh, where are you going? It doesn't say. Hmm. Eh, whatever. I'm not gonna resettle them. Uh... It's probably one of the other guys that's migrating right now. Well, maybe not. Okay, strange. But uh, they'll pr they will more than likely leave the planet. So we're going to go ahead and terraform it. Because we're jerks like that. Um, what do we need again? Can't remember if it's desert. Yeah, desert. Okay, so Pithage, Mog... Uh, and this is a 21 tile world too. It's not not that bad. So we're gonna terraform into a desert world. There we go. I can't believe we don't have anything for clearing massive glacier tile blockers. That's very interesting. Okay, so now our armies we can uh, embark them. Boop. There you go. And these guys are really unhappy. Hmm. 60 unrest, eh? Uh, well, maybe we should leave our armies on there just so that they don't revolt, and then we suddenly get a little revolting empire in here. Let's let's land the armies again. We'll leave them on there for a bit, but uh, we got them if we need them. Okay. Um. So now the now that the Visari Star Corps has closed their borders, we got to go to war with pretty much everybody, just so that we can move. This is really silly. He's closed his board at war with Valdari mediators. Our military could crush your pitiful nation in one fell swoop. Despite having inferior technology and having pathetic naval capacity and fleet power compared to us. That makes perfect sense. Right? <laughs> no, it does not. Um, okay, so we still got 276 days for the Dyson Sphere to finish the frame. So uh, we're, we are just, we're just going to wipe these guys out. Uh, declare war, nation of MacGruber, uh, we are going to, let's see, uh, let's establish, let, meh, meh, let's make them a tributary, yeah, let's do that, and we will humiliate them, and that will give us a little bit of bonus influence, okay. We have declared war. Confirm. There we go. Okay, so let's take our military fleet. The second Void Skulkers. Teletransport here. And this is why we can keep a couple armies, because we're going to invade these guys. Can we see how much they have in terms of army strength on their planet? Wow, that's a lot of armies. 
That's way more than the primitives. To be fair, this is a 25 tile world, so they probably have 25 armies on it. Okay. Uh, and this one, yeah, lots of armies there too. That's fine. That is perfectly fine. Let's see. Uh, what's going on here? Scientist has leveled up. Okay, so Pithage, Mog, we're going to... Uh, we have Newt armies, so we're going to do a few more. Uh, armies... We'll do... Here we go. One, two, three. Where? Wait, no, you know what? We'll just do one here. We'll do one there. And one there. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine. This is going to be a cluster to organize all this later on. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, uh, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, 21, ooh, eh, that'll give us 27, so we'll do three more, 22, 23, 24, that'll give us 30 armies to mess around with. Easiest way to win planetary invasions is just have more armies. So let's move these guys here, take out their military fleet, their their massive military. This is going to be an epic battle. Their massive fleet, uh, which is probably going to put up a significant fight. I'm very worried about this one. Um, I'm not sure we'll be able to really stand up very much against them. Um, so like th this 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 space battle could go either way. Spaceport engaged. Situation log updated. Situation log updated. Well, that was a pretty epic battle. Uh, one for the ages, I think. Um, I I'm, I'm think I'm going to, you know, uh, highlight that clip there. It was uh, pretty amazing. That was that was a valiant effort, Visari Starcore. What the heck is going on here? All oh, right, that's more Visari Starcore planets. <laughs> nice. Now, does this guy have a decent fleet to be worried about? No. Whoa. Army recruitment done. All right, we'll just wait for the other ones to finish up. Okay, so I don't need you bombing that planet. Move to this system now, please. The nice thing, too, is that we're still positive in terms of the, the destroyer Corvette combo, though. Yeah, I know, right? Like, that's why I was worried. That that high evasion of those really small ships, it, it was uh, causing me a lot of concern. <laughs> I know, I'm not very funny. <laughs> Okay. Hostile station Where? engaged. Why do we have a couple transport fleets? That's interesting. All right, let's move them to Pithage Mog. Uh, where is that? Baggio, there you are. Pithage Mog. Y'all go here. Please and thank you. Okay, so we're going to bomb the crap out of their capital first. That's the first one we'll take over because it's a big 25 tile world. They got a lot of armies there. Uh, I wonder, can we recruit... Ooh, we can. Let's get a general. Uh, Army logistician? No, don't care about that. These are not good picks. Damn. Damn, that sucks. Let's do it. This guy. Army logistician. What do we got? Migration treaty proposal. Don't care. Okay, so we are done with army recruitment. Let's 
get everybody moving. Need to uh, need to embark them all. Okay. Because Pollux is sick as an irrigator. Embark, embark, embark. All right, hold up. Embark. Oh, hold on. Fifth edge, Mog. Why are you guys all grouchy again? Oh, maybe I embarked them when I didn't want to. That was probably it. Oops. Oh, well. Um, okay, armies. Nope, combat, sorry. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. This is always a nightmare to try and organize uh, compared to uh, if I was to just recruit a bunch of armies on one planet. But at the same time, I've got all these armies recruited way faster that way, uh, which is what I was going for. So, Transport Fleet 21, please go back to Pith Edge Mog. Thank you very much. Uh, you guys can actually get the general. There we go. Dice and Sphere's Frame now done. And look at that. We have 884,000 minerals. So, let's start the next one. 2,700 days for that. Oh, my goodness. That is a very long time going to be a while before we... Ooh, what did we just finish? That's what I don't know. Focused Archimeters, right? We were getting rid of those because I didn't want to see them anymore. Uh, let's see. We got Flash Coolant and Focusing Arrays. Eh. Eh, let's go with Focusing Arrays for this one. Hopefully the next one we get Flash Coolant again just so that they're both uh, on, on an even keel. Okay, transport fleets. Got lots of transport fleets. Look at them all. Oh my goodness. <laughs> ah, not these guys. Okay, there we go. And now... Ooh, excuse me. What a great time to get the hiccups. Not Epsilon indeed. I need to go to Bagiol. Baggi! There we go. Put him in orbit. Okay. Amazingly, we're still in the positive for energy generation. Uh, we lost a decent amount of mineral production, though. Huh. Oh, well. Anyway, so they're bombing the crap out of their capital world, which is over here. Uh, it should be out of planetary fortifications. Yep, they have zero. So once our plat... We'll just wait for our transport fleets to... Merge over Pithage Mog, and uh, then we will go invade their capital world. Uh, I should recruit a couple defensive armies because we're going to be leaving these guys, and I don't want them revolting. Uh, I, don't know, I don't want them revolting while we're busy doing, you know, more important stuff. So let's do one, two, three, four, five, six. That's good enough. And I can build a spaceport, too. I forgot about that. This will actually increase our naval capacity a little bit so that we're not losing so much to uh, being over naval capacity. Now, here's something that I don't do very often, and I don't understand. Like, I keep forgetting, for the most part, and I don't understand why I don't notice more often. We would like to purchase this service. There's 5,000 energy credits. I didn't mean to dump it so quickly like that, but we're also going to do... Uh, a little bit of floating, of economy floating. Uh, talk to Zuracor. We want more minerals. So, uh, how much can we give away? Let's give away about 10,000 energy. One, two, three, four, five. There. We just got 5,000 minerals for doing nothing. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now, does the Vissari Star Core, like, they have these other systems over here that I can't even get to because the Hanmar Enlightened Kingdom has their borders closed off to me. Just like most of the rest of the galaxy. Implying that that's really going to do something for you guys. Whatever. Two, three. Oh my god. 
This should be the last time I have to select all those transport fleets because we're going to merge them now. Okay, and go ahead and merge, please. Thank you very much. And the one thing I didn't do is I didn't put attachments on all these other armies. That was dumb. Oh, well. It's a bar call. There we go. Okay. Now, transport fleet 22. You guys. Let's get you guys to land because I need to put the attachments on. Search complete. Let's see what we finished. Land armies. Do, do administrative efficiency. There we go. Love it. Um, we could do the scourge weapons, but I mean, we don't really need those, do we? Nah. Uh, wow, that is expensive. Climate control network. <laughs> nice. Um, let's get that out of the way. Four months. Jeez. Even with the 3,400 uh, science costs, it's still done in four months. <laughs> Normally you do a research project that for that costs thirty four sixty five points or somewhere around there, and it'd be like, oh yeah, it's going to take three years. <laughs> Not so much. Well, I guess I mean we're generating how much science? Let's see, nine hundred and ninety three per month. So that explains why. Man, could use a we could kind of use another science nexus, although that would take a long time, and we still only get. 90 science points out of it. It would still be really nice to have, though. Okay, back to our armies. Uh, let's see here. 18th Attack Legion. Clone Commandos. Yep. Okay, let's just going to make sure that we put these only on our uh, assault armies. Why? Well, don't really need them on our defense armies. At least not yet. Oh, we have uh, a building that is unoccupied. Let's find out what it is in just a moment. There we go. That should do it. Now let's embark all. Uh, unoccupied building. Oh, it's one of the ones on Pithage Mog. Shocker. All right, we got uh, our last few assault armies that should need attachments. They just landed, so let's uh, put a few attachments on. And then we'll go ahead and embark all again. And that should do it. They should all have the clone commandos attachment to increase their damage dealt. Research complete. Ooh, research complete. Climate control network done. Uh, what's another good one that we could do right now? Uh, we'll do Empire Leader man, uh, capacity. That's always nice. Um, let's see. Matter compression 5. Yeah, let's do that. That's going to take a while. For 56 months for a grade 5. Brutal. Okay. Let's do this. Invasion time. And armies, baby. What do we got? Valdari Mediators has ended their rivalry with the Great Cundon Coalition. Not that it matters, because they're both getting wiped out. Look at the Great Cundon Coalition. For so long, they were able to hold off this whole northern portion of the galaxy from the Prithoran Scourge. But uh, it's not happening anymore. Really, really sucks. Oh, look at that. They're rivals again. <laughs> right, a, right after breaking their rivalry, they are instantly rivals again. Are we surprised? Absolutely not. Okay, so here is the other thing we're going to do. Let's do Latium. We're going to do Latium Prime. We're going to make that a rally point. Uh, did I get... The, is the spaceport done on Pithage Mog? No, it's not. Two more months. Um... Ooh, who just died? Governor Herbert Dubner has just perished. Okay. Do we have any other governors? No, we do not. 
Interesting. Oh, well, the, all these governors available are kind of poopy anyways, so whatever. Um, oh, look, the rivalry ended again. <laughs> Recruitment of armies has been completed on Pithaj Mog. There we go. Okay. And it looks like uh, one of them has already left anyways, so there, there's not as many unhappy pops producing unrest, which is good. Uh, how are we doing on the terraforming? 944 days to go still, right? Oh, okay. Uh, did we do the next section of the Dyson Sphere? We must have, because we're way down on minerals from the 80,000. Yeah, it's definitely building. Which is good. Once that next section is done, we'll be getting more energy output. It'll be generating another 100. Uh, so that'll be pretty sweet. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We are going to start building up those cruisers that I mentioned earlier. So, McGruber. Uh, do I have them designed correctly is the real question. Uh, these guys have small plasma, bombers, flak artillery. Okay, yeah, those guys need to be a little more defensive. Our cruisers should be a little more offensive. Large plasma cannons is fine because they're going to be engaging these military stations that the Scourge is building all over the place. And they'll have to break through a couple of them to get to their infested worlds. So let's build about 20 cruisers for now. There. That should do it. That's 20. Uh, we'll let we'll let them uh, do their thing, and the other thing that we can do, of course, is queue up a colony ship. Uh, Adasich Energy will queue the colony ship here. Oh, and let's see what kind of newt do we want to do it? Let's do one with erudite and fertile. We'll do that one. That way, with the fertile trait, they'll have uh, bonus growth speed. Invasion. At least one of our armies are involved in invasion. In, in an invasion. We'll probably lose a few armies because they have a lot on the defense here. Um, but that's perfectly fine. Any or we won't lose any. Secured. That works too. Okay, cool. All right, uh, next target. These guys over here. There you go. Now let's uh, embark all these guys. Boop. And the transport fleet can just follow these guys. Let's keep them on passive. I can't believe all this, uh, all this extra farting around we got to do just so that we can t take a crack at the Prothoran. It's very, very frustrating. Construction complete. There we go, and now we're negative energy. That's fine. Once they get to the spaceport where they're all going to, going to uh, rally to, um, we should be back in the positive. And even better, once the Dyson Sphere has done its first stage and we're generating another plus 100 energy, we won't be in the negative. At all, even with all these ships flying about. So I wonder if we can get another... Oh, we already have an Admiral. What am I on about? Uh, so let's see. The one in Latrium already. The 12th Void Skulkers. You guys get this dude. Have fun. Looks like there is a whole bunch of Scourge fleets ready to invade the Han Myrna Lightning Kingdom. Look at them go. Oof. That's scary. We're not going to help them. Nobody else in the entire galaxy is helping. Um, now, something else I talked about in the previous uh, video that nobody could hear me. Ooh, whose fleet is that? That's the Niebuhrite Covenant. Ooh. Yeah, we don't want to declare war with this right in the middle of our territory. Whew. That's a decent-sized fleet. 
um, anyways, like I was saying, the other thing I was talking about was I'm thinking of just uh, finishing this one off complete. and saying, yeah, that's we've played this enough. Let's finish it. We're good. The spaceport of Idasich Energy. What did you finish building? I forget what I had you building. You had a colony ship? Okay. I thought I built it like... Okay, never mind. I know I queued a colony ship. I thought I was... I didn't realize it was way over there. All right, let's colonize this bad boy. Um, let's see. This is going to be a minerals world. So, I think... Uh, da -da 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 -da. Where would be a good spot? Ooh, I know. Let's do it right here. We're going to call it Ophiogles Mining. There we go. We'll still have to probably put uh, a Paradise Dome out on it just to ensure that we have more than enough food. Uh, where would be a good spot for food? Well, now that I put that thing there... Ah, crap. I guess I kind of messed that up. You know what? Maybe not. Uh, we'll put the... What's it called? The... Yeah, we'll keep the capital building here. We'll do the mine mineral silo, excuse me, right here. So that uh, these two tiles right here will both be getting uh, the adjacency bonus to the capital building and the mineral silo. And then here I can put the Paradise Dome. Yeah, we'll be okay. We'll be okay. This will be a nice planet to add to our collection. It'll greatly reduce... Like, it'll come way in handy that we have so much uh, energy production from our two Dyson spheres. Uh, because it's going to be another big drain with zero energy generation on the planet. But that's fine. All right, land our armies... Second invasion, here we go. Enemy planet secured. And there we go. All done. Okay, let's get the transport fleet following the battleships yet again. Okay, so we have our... We appear to have underestimated your net value, Newts. Rest assured, it will not happen again. Uh, duh! The best possible outcome. Okay, so what did they subject themselves to? We have won this war with the following demands. Make a tributary and humiliate. So are they our tributary? Yes, they are. <laughs> and they're humiliated. Good. So we can pass through their space at any time now, uh, which will be super handy. And how many... Where did all those Prothoran fleets go? Are they in the Hadmar Enlightened Kingdom now? There's two in that system. We've got one over there. And how many are over here? Just the one. There was a lot of movement in this part of the galaxy not too long ago, but I guess they're kind of buggering out. To go bother the guys in the north part of the galaxy, the Valdari Mediators and the uh, Great Cundon Coalition. Yeah, the Great Cundon Coalition is falling rapidly. How many more planets are infested now? 83. Almost another 10 planets already. That's not good. They're spreading way too quickly now. Uh, situation's getting worse very quickly. Look at this. The Valdari Mediators. They have a fleet with only two ships and yet it's a rating of 34,000 fleet power. Pretty crazy. I think one of them was a Titan, though, so that's probably why. Okay, so we're going to wait a bit to get it to close to another 10,000 minerals. And uh, then we'll build another 20 um, cruisers. And that will be our de-infestation fleet. They will be our exterminators. <laughs> uh, the other thing we need to do is check up on the Starbase on Pithage... Or, sorry, uh, Spaceport, excuse me on uh, Pithage Mog and ooh, excuse me 
fully upgrade it so that we get the best naval capacity bonus from it. Uh, so here we go. Three, four, five, six. Done. All right, cool. Now, which, what was the other one? We had another primitive world. Huh. Oh, well, whatever. Uh, we have another unused building. What else is happening? We are full on influence. I knew that was coming. Um, okay, let's check our society. How many edicts do we have enacted? Because we can... Oh, we got a bunch. Colonization yeah, I'd say progress. we're fine. Um, yeah, we're getting six. We're still getting 6.3 influence per month. That's just nuts. Okay, so let's enact a couple uh, edicts. We are going to do Spirit of Science. Whoa, not Arms Race. We can't... Oh, right. We have to be materialist for Spirit of Science. I forgot about that. Scientist Clandrax has died at the age of 105. All right. Well, uh, do we have one that's available? No, we do not. So let's recruit a new one. And we'll do... Uh, do we already have an expertise computing. Probably already have... Yeah, we got two expertise materials. Wow. Yeah, these are some pretty poopy options. We'll do another expertise computing. Um, just in case. Okay, so let's have him assisting at research. Thank you very much. Okay. Next... Uh, the second Void Skulkers, you guys can return. I don't need you over there anymore. For obvious reasons. Why are you returning over there? Return here. Entering orbit of Arimadon Core. Okay, now we can set a rally point here. Uh, we'll make these guys aggressive. And we will disable the rally point around Latium Prime. Because we don't need the Corvettes flying to the planet anymore. They will rally around the the fleet uh, we're going to rename this fleet they're going to be they're going to be the battlers there we go and then these guys are going to be the exterminators There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, our, our energy is quite low right now, but it, that should improve once we get everybody in orbit, uh, including the massive fleet of armies. So let's just put everything in orbit. Should improve our energy uh, generation, and then we can use the energy that we generate to kind of float our minerals sell off a bunch of energy, get some minerals back so that we can just continue building more ships. I still want to maintain a threshold of about 40,000 minerals left over, uh, just so that I know that we're not going to have to wait a billion years for the next part of the Dyson Sphere, even though it's 1,700 days from completing this current section. Seventeen hundred days. That is quite a while. That's almost six years. Um, and I know we definitely could... Pr well, let's see. Uh, five years, that'd be... Psh, we're getting about a thousand per month with with our fleets docked. We're getting about a thousand per month. So, eh, 12, 5, 60, yeah, 60,000. We'd be able to make that in 40 months. So a little over three years we'd make enough to do the next section of the Dyson Sphere. Oh, another rivalry. Look at that. Same rivalries back. Great Cundin Coalition and Valdari Mediators. To the shock of no one. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and build the next group of cruisers. There we go. That should give us 40 cruisers. Um, that's, a, that's a very good start, in my opinion. 
I would like to get 50, maybe even 60. Uh, we're taking over some territory now because we colonized this planet. So we might we might even get this system right next to us under our control. Not that it really matters. Five energy, two minerals, two engineering science. Uh, whoop de doo uh, So this planet should be done. Hmm. One more month to complete. As soon as it's done, we'll build another spaceport. Upgrade it. That'll improve our, uh, what's it called? Naval capacity again. Colony established. There we go. Spaceport. Please build. And on the surface, we're going to put you, little buddy, we're going to put you here. Uh, what should we do? do for buildings. Ooh, a frontier clinic, yes. And uh, I think that'll be about it for now. There's not, There isn't really anything else I want to build. Oh, we could do a mineral silo. So frontier clinic, and then we'll plop the mineral silo down where I want it to go. There we go. Um, and uh, the severely tall player in me is thinking, well, we should put a few science labs down as well. And yeah, I, I feel like we should. But what? Why did I leave it paused? Uh, yeah, I really feel like we should, but you know, I think we'll be okay. Arms race. Ship builds. That just increases ship build speed and army build speed. So, not too concerned about the build company. speed of our, sh of our ships right now. There we go. That made a bit of a dent in our uh, minerals and energy production right now. <laughs> okay, uh, so we can definitely do a bit more. Let's do capacity overload here. Uh, Edasic mining. Why don't we activate production targets? Didn't really do much. Uh, Poluxicus. What are you mostly producing? Minerals. Polux Alpha. Minerals. Uh, let's do a Remodon Core. What are you doing? Production targets. Another nine minerals per month. Uh, production targets here. Yeah, I kind of miss not having a uh, Raptor God. Hello, how's it going? I kind of miss. This is part of the reason why I, I don't really like playing non-materialist because that spirit of science eating is kind of nice just to get a little bit more science production out of your uh, out of your pops and your tiles. Uh, let's do both on this one. Screw it. Why not? Uh, Yandu's Prime, you are going to be Capacity Overload. There we go. Okay, so now we can go back to... We have 8,000 energy, so let's talk to Zuracorp again and go trade for minerals, and we will trade to three... Trade away 6,000, get another 3,000 minerals just to float our economy a little bit more. Not that we really need to, um, but, you know, I did it anyways. And then we shall do about... Let's do another 10 Corvettes. Or, sorry, cruisers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, that'll give us 50 cruisers in the extermination fleet. Um, and that, that should do it. I, I'm quite content with that. I think we'll be okay. The next step, unfortunately, we're going to have to go ahead and declare war on the uh, Hanmer Enlightened Kingdom now. Bring them to their knees to the point where they want to uh, no longer, you know, they'll just surrender. Uh, what should we do? Okay, so Derbiter and Epsilon Eridani. Anything in the Derbiter or Epsilon Eridani system, we will do. We'll try to liberate it. That's what we'll do. We will liberate the Derbiter, Epsilon Eridani, Navi. Just, just three, you know, three of the systems that are right here. What is your ethics? Uh, I believe we've changed. Yes, we're fanatic militarist now and xenophobic. When we started this, though, we were um, fairly certain we were fanatic xenophobe and pacifist because the uh, 
Construction complete. We started this off with the Inward Perfection Civic and Agrarian Idol. And for Inward Perfection, I do believe you have to be a fanatic xenophobe. And for Agrarian Idol, you need um, pacifism. So I'm quite certain that was the case. Well, look at what's left of the Valdari Mediators. Hardly anything. There's a lot of Prothoran fleets moving around, though. Infested Worlds up to 87. Oh, man. It's going to be a massively uphill battle. But anyways, yeah, I would, like I was saying earlier, um, I mentioned this in the previous um, quote-unquote chapter, but I had my mic off so nobody could hear me, but I was thinking, like, the, the longest we'll go is to uh, part 20 with this playthrough. Uh, you know, whatever happens. Pithage Mog has been terraformed. Oh, very good, very nice. Um, are these guys leaving? I can't quite tell. Let's see, details... Doesn't say. Is mig is migrating to Fushro in twenty months. Yep. Um, yeah, I was I was saying you know it'd be nice to start a new game because like even though it'd be great to try and fight against the Prothoran Scourge and uh, actually uh, stand up to them this time, it's just uh, it's an uphill battle every time we try to do anything. Uh, we have to go to war with half the galaxy to try and take the fight to the Prothoran, and it's extremely annoying. Uh, let's just do some random stuff. Crew quarters, engineering bay, uh, cruiser assembly yards, uh, battleship assembly yards. Yeah, sure, we'll do that. Uh, peace between the Hanmer Enlightened Kingdom and the Valdari Mediators. Okay, cool. Sentient resource management. Yay. Uh, let's see another good one. I don't know. I'm not really too concerned about getting another core sector system. Proclamation broadcast would be okay. Yeah, let's do that. Picking the xenophobe ethic. Other empires give you a hard time. Lowell makes sense. No, I know, but we actually made we actually made friends earlier. We were in a federation with a good portion of the galaxy here. We had the Hanmer Enlightened Kingdom, which is one of our neighbors. Uh, the Covenant of Euclap was also in it. Uh, the United Rothak Pack was in it, and the Niburite Stellar Hegemony. Uh, these guys over here, the Kingdom of Geofemari, they're um, fanatic purifiers, so they were not in it. Um, and I, I, there was one more. I, th I can't remember if it was the, if it was the, t oh no, right, it was the Great Cundon Coalition, which is these guys. Those guys had this whole section of the galaxy up here in the outer spiral arm. They had that whole section. That's all gone to the Prothoran Scourge. Um, so we had uh, about, I want to say six, maybe seven members. And we were all, it was like the most powerful empires in the entire galaxy. But the problem was I couldn't freaking do anything because we were in that federation. They were taking up a lot of our naval capacity. Uh, they weren't letting, they weren't really letting me get outside of my own territory and do anything because uh, a couple other neighbors who are no longer there uh, were closing their borders to me so I couldn't move my fleet out to try and fight the Prothoran Scourge. Now I'm running into a similar problem because our neighbors don't care about us. They don't want us in their borders. and It's like, you know what? Whatever. Very annoying. So I abandoned that federation, and because of that, everybody really dislikes us. There's a couple people in the federation that really dislike us. Uh, one in particular, because I repeatedly shot down their attempts, or sorry, their proposed uh, ideas for the federation. They, they kept trying to kick out this the smallest empire in our federation, like repeatedly. It, it popped up like every month, and I kept saying no. So they really did not appreciate that. Uh, if we, I'm pretty sure it was the Niburite Covenant where, uh, yeah, Niburite Stellar Hegemony. They have a negative 1,000 opinion like a fanatic purifier would, but it's because uh, we voted down their proposals so many times that they have a negative 864 opinion modifier towards us for that. And then uh, who are the other ones? These guys. Uh, these guys are... Huh. I don't know what happened to the... These guys used to be a fanatic purifiers. Why are they just xenophobic isolationists now? 
Strange. Nice, I'm playing as a fanatic xenophobe and militarist. Uh, that can be a pretty potent combination. Um, because the supremacy traditions uh, give you similar bonuses to both of those ethics. Fan being a fanatic xenophobe increases your border range. So does adopting the supremacy tradition. And being militarist increases your uh, fire rate. Uh, so does completing the supremacy traditions. So those can complement each other fairly well. It's just you you, you kind of just go it alone the entire playthrough, though. Um, but you know it's a good thing to do if you're if you know what you're doing and you're capable of uh, maintaining a decent sized fleet so that nobody gets an idea that gets the idea of oh these guys have no ships let's just go wipe them out. What's happening on Pithaj Mog? Don't even know. Should we care? Eh, probably not. Research complete. Research complete. Focusing rays. There we go. Really? The Curator Exploration Lab is propping up again? Uh, let's do Applied Superconductivity. That's going to take a while, though. You know what? Let's do that Exploration Lab. Maybe this will re-roll it so that we get to either Flash Coolant or Focusing Rays again. Oops, why am I in ship designer? Stupid. Um, okay, so yeah, we have no more governors. Are there any good ones that we can... Ooh, intellectual. Uh, how many slots do we have? We have three leader slots. Okay, let's get two intellectual governors. Ooh, retired fleet officer. Reducing ship cost but and increasing uh, ship build speed. That's not too bad. really wish I could get way more of those. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is on a dash of science, we are going to put one of these governors. There we go. Not a huge increase, but uh, an increase nonetheless. Uh, let's see. Is there another one that I produce a lot on? A dash of science core had like 100 physics. Uh, I don't think I have any other colonies that have that much science production. In fact, Tertius factually does a decent amount. Remondon Core does a fair bit. Bagiel Prime. Pollux Nerdixicus. So Bagiel Prime, 48, 50, and 39. And then Pollux Nerdix, 53, 40, and 46. Uh, I think it would be better we put him here. There we go. Okay. Right now I'm playing as a fanatical purifier nation and it's actually really fun. Yeah, it's it's different. It's it's a little tougher in, in terms of uh, maintaining your diplomacy or trying to maintain your diplomacy, I will admit. Uh, but it's definitely a very fun way of playing. that. And the other one that we currently have is uh, Devouring Swarm. That's another one. Uh, if you play as a hive mind, you can be Devouring Swarm. And that's another different and fun way to play. You basically forsake all diplomacy to exterminate everybody else in the galaxy. And everybody hates you. You cannot engage in diplomacy. Yeah, it could be a good time. I think Fanatic Purifier would be better, though, because they have way better bonuses. That 33% fire rate increase is nothing to scoff at. Um, so, uh, that's definitely a thing. Uh, you know what we need to do is we, we could use administrative operations. What was it? Administrative efficiency, excuse me. Uh, we could use that. And then we could get rid of the sector in, around Elthior Prime and finally get this planet back under our control. I totally forgot about that. Um, it's a decent planet. It's producing Research enough complete. energy to be in the positive from the looks of things. Um, so it's powering its own planet and it's producing a bunch of minerals. That's not too bad. Uh, there we go. Flash coolant. That's what we want. We might want another science lab for our next uh, megastructure section. We got a thousand days still for the stage one of the Dyson Sphere. Have you played as a hive mind? Um, I Yes. I've only done that the once and I didn't play it for very long because I actually got wiped out really early. Um, it's also different. Let's see. Exterminators. 49 cruisers. Why do you have one cruiser in here? Transfer ships. Okay, I'm going to have to go through, through the giant list of uh, 130 battleships just to get to the cruiser. The one cruiser at the bottom that I want to transfer over. 
This is my one complaint about Stellaris Console Edition is some of the UI is extremely tedious to get through. The big one is when you're declaring war and you're going through the millions of systems that a giant empire could have to determine what you're doing with them and whatnot, to set your war demands. It's a nightmare. Um, that's my only real complaint about this game is that these, these UIs where it's just a big, long list. Um, yeah, early game, those lists will be very short. But you get a game that's, you know, 300 years in. I've seen video clips of people who are like 900 years into the game. They're, they're at like year 3000 and something. And it makes me wonder, why the hell are you playing the same game for that long? Or I should say the same save for that long. I just find that insane. Uh, but at the same time, uh, what the heck? Somebody insulted us? Did you just talk shit? You did. You have like nothing in terms of comparable fleet power. Okay. Um, but anyways, yeah, like I was saying, that's my one gripe about this game is, is it's takes some of the UI is just very tedious. I wonder if they will update the UI in the next major update. Well, there's been idea. Uh, like my friend even made an idea. He would like it if when you highlight your thing on a science ship, like over here in the outliner, uh, it shows you which scientist is assigned to it and like what level they are. It doesn't have to be a whole bunch of information. Just the name of the scientist and what level they are would be good, so that you don't have to actually check every science ship or go to the people tab and try to determine by reading who who is commanding what. You know. Uh, so there's that. That was one suggestion. I think a good thing to do would be uh, once you hit a certain threshold for like a number of ships or things assigned to a certain area, like say once you have four construction ships, you open up uh, you open up these civilian ships drop down, and then you have two more kind of mini drop downs. You have one for your construction ships because you have like four of them, and then you have one for your science ships because you have four or more of those as well. I think that would be very useful. Um, not so much with the military fleets. I understand why those are the way they are. I think that I think they should stay as is. Uh, but when you go into something like I was just doing, like uh, transferring ships, I think it should do a similar thing, where it's you know it condenses them all into a single uh, drop down battleship, and then like if you have multiple, if you have a fleet of multiple battleship classes. It uh, merges those together, so you have a little drop down of say, say we had like three battleship classes in this fleet right now, uh, we would see battleship uh, Lorod Gexad class, and then battleship Lorod something else class, and then battleship uh, blah, 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 class, and then you can do a drop down of those, and then it lists the ships. I think that would really help, so that if you're actually splitting up your fleets based on uh, like ship class, uh, or well, sorry. If you're splitting up, yeah, well, like I said, if you're splitting up your fleets based on like ship types, ship class, that kind of stuff, um, it's, it's a lot easier to get through it all. And the war demands, oh my god, the war demands. Same thing. Uh, put the seed planet thing in a single drop down and then put liberate planet in another little drop down. So it's like, okay, I want to liberate planets and then boom, uh, it does. And then it has little drop, it, like it has little drop downs of for the systems as well, for the specific planet. And then it, you know when you do that little drop down, it shows you all the planets in there. Maybe not have that if it's a single planet si uh, system, but if there's like two or more, I think there should be another little miniature drop down. Anyways, we're gonna have to go to war with the Hanmar Enlightened Kingdom, and we're gonna do that right now. Uh. A little adamant to do it because we are going to run very low on energy credits. Uh, so let's do capacity overload here as well. This is not going to make a huge difference, but, uh, you know, it's better than not doing anything. And that's it. We have no more influence. We just went from uh, fully stockpiled on influence to zip zero zilch. I wonder if they will update the UI in the next major update. That one can, one can hope. One can hope. Uh, so let's get the battlers over here. And the exterminators, you guys can stay put. The armies will get them following the battlers. Oop. There you go. Did they send us another insult? Eh, nope. 
It's the same insult. It's just I didn't notice. I didn't, or I didn't get rid of the first one, I should say. Okay, so what we're going to do... Uh, Epsilon Eridani, uh, Derbiter, and what was the other one? Navi. Those systems we are going to liberate. Declare war. Epsilon Eridani, Derbiter, and Navi. So this is the part where I get annoyed. Uh, need to go all the way down. Epsilon Eridani, Derbiter, and Navi. That's what we are looking for. Need to go all the way down there. So it took us that long just to get through Seed Planet, which is essentially Takeover Planet. Okay. Um, did we see any Vistalog for the bed? Nope. Nope, nope. Turin, Taran, Rack. Nope. Kuna, uh, nope. Epsilon, Eridani, Derbiter, and Navi is what we're looking for. Uh, let's see. Oh, there it is. Uh, so, Epsilon, Eridani, Epsilon, Eridani. There's Derbiter. And can we do Navi as well? So, remember, those points that you see in the yellow numbers. That is the cost of that war demand, and your war demands cannot exceed a certain threshold. I believe it's only 100 points. Um, so, so long as our war demands are not uh, exceeding the war score cost of 100, then we should be okay. And it looks like we are. So we're going to liberate all the planets in the systems that I named repeatedly <laughs> to try and make sure that I remember their names. Uh, yeah, war demands suck. I have to write down what planets I want just to do anything. Yeah, tell me about it. Um, so we're going to go all the way down again. Let's see. Cleansing planets would be amusing, but uh, we're not going to do that. Destroy frontier outpost. What do we want to do? Eh, let's not do that. Now, see, we're going to be going to war with the entire Federation again. So, yeah. We are going to... No, see, we can't even make the Hanmer Enlightened Kingdom a tributary. <laughs> um... Why don't we do that to the United Rothak pack? We'll make them a tributary. Yep, let's do that. And then we're going to uh, humiliate the Hanmer Enlightened Kingdom. There we go. Okay, so this, this, this is going to be brutal. So we need to invade five planets. Uh, the ones in the three systems I named. I made it Empire Nations of Groot with the Plantoid species. Yeah, I think we've all done that, buddy. <laughs> we have there we go. War. We have declared war. Oh, unpause, please. All right, so, battlers, I need you guys to go to Epsilon Eridani right now. And the transport fleet, you guys just sit tight for a bit, actually. Don't follow those guys anymore. Need to, need to wait for them to wipe out these... Uh, what the? Oh, now we're negative. Oh, well. Need to wait for them to wipe out these military stations before you're going after them. Alas, this war will be the beginning of the end for your pitiful nation, Newt. I'm not so sure about that, buddy. Like, your your fortress just got eviscerated instantaneously. Oh, look, the other one's about to die, too. Goodbye. GG, strong tactics. Oh, I don't need you attacking the mining station, guys. Come on. Remember, we're doing all this just so that we can move through their portion of space and do what we want to do. Like, this is... This is overkill. I don't need... You. Okay, I guess you do need to take out that spaceport. Alright, so battlers, please bombard this planet so that the transport fleet can come in. There we go. We're negative on energy right now. But we have a lot of influence production, so maybe once... Uh, what did you finish there? The spaceport of Pithaj Mog. Okay, that's why we're negative. Because it finished all its modules. That's fine. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can end this war quickly. We need to bombard the five planets that I named. Take them over. Or, well, sorry, invade them. Uh, combat, let's see. Planetary fortifications. <clears throat> About 100 per day. Oh, here comes a fleet. Because that's scary, I guess. Maybe. I'm not sure... Like, except for that one Nebrite fleet that we encountered earlier that was like 50k. 
We could take on most of these guys' little military fleets with just our cruisers. We wouldn't even need our big battleship fleet. No, go back to bombarding. You guys keep bombarding, please and thank you. What are you doing? Research complete. Research complete. What do we get? Matter compression five. Okay, dope. Uh, let's see. Let's do. Huh. Let's do synapse interceptors. Try to improve our strike craft a little bit. We have no bonuses to our strike craft. It seems like most every time we declare war and are about to get into a big battle with people, this particular tune starts playing. <laughs> I'm not complaining. It's one of my favorites. It's just uh, interesting timing I've found. Okay, so let's take a look. See, do they have any fleets that they're going to sneak in from a different direction? Probably not. What's the United Rothak Pack doing? What do they have? I... Eh. Tiny little fleet of nothing. And this one is another tiny little fleet of nothing. Where are these guys going? Following fourth stellar cluster. I have no idea where that's going. Whatever. You do your thing. Okay. Can we land our armies now? Oh, wait. We'll deselect those guys. Thank you. Combat. Planetary fortifications. Yes, we can. So, let's go ahead and do that. Land armies, baby. Target! Maximum firepower! should be no problem. Uh, let's take a look at our new mining planet. Haven't done anything on that yet. Do we have our pops growing on it? Enemy planet secured. Ophiogold's mining. Oh yeah, can, can we upgrade this guy yet? Nope. Not quite. Hey, what happened to the guys with the fertile trade? Come on. What are you doing? Eh, whatever. All right, enemy planet secured, so let's go back to this Barco, please and thank you. And we need all these guys. Continue following, please and thank you. Rock and roll. That is a lot of Prothoran movement. They are really going ham on the northern parts of the galaxy there, but they're starting to make a big, big mark on the Hanmer Enlightened Kingdom. Look at all these fleets coming in now. There's two over there. Excuse me. That's two over there. Three. Oh, man. Starting to make their mark, it looks like. Ooh, excuse me. Crew quarters. Engineering bay. Uh, cruiser. Battleship assembly, and we're going to do a fleet academy here. I really need to test how the fleet academy works. Does do the bonuses it give apply to all ships built on that spaceport at all times? I really need to test that out because I want to be 100% clear on, on what it actually does. Okay, so here we go. Land armies again. This should be a pretty quick fight. Because if, if the Fleet Academy behaves the way I think it does, where it applies the tracking bonus um, and the other things that it does for the, sh the ship bonuses, if it applies those to ships that you build in that spaceport, then the Fleet Academy is a lot better than I thought it was. Right, Enemy uh, planet secured. The, the Hanmer Enlightened Kingdom has uh, declared the remaining fallen empire that is still a fallen empire, not an awakened one, they have gone and declared them rivals. Oh, what just happened? Epsilon Indy 5 has been terraformed into a desert world. Cool. Okay, we need to go back to the battlers. What are you guys doing? You are moving over there to bomb it again? You just bombed it. You're good. You're good, guys. It's cool. <laughs> okay, so there's one planet in Navi, and it's the farthest away. That's fine. We're going to do Derbiter next. So warp over here. 
Still losing a little bit of energy, but, um, you know, hopefully that's not too permanent. 20, ti 20 tile desert world and a 15 tile desert world. That wouldn't be too bad for a sector in there. All right, how are we doing, Dyson Sphere? 400 days. So only about a one more in-game year. Okay, knock out these spaceports quick. Hello, Odile the Great. Good to see you again. Uh, just got to get our battlers to knock out the second spaceport, then I'll, I'll have them start bombing this one first. Sarah Flugier. Situation log updated. Zap goes the spaceport. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no. Over here. Keep going to this one. This one's fine. You, you were doing the right thing. You were doing what I want you to do. It's all good. Uh, what's this? 12th Stellar Cluster. Interesting. Well, you guys do. You guys do you. Oh, man. Somebody left a science lab? Why would you do that? Dirty rotten scoundrel. Huh. I don't know if we need to leave that there. <laughs> Screw it. Let's do that. Reduce happiness? Whatever. I was trying to determine, like, what tile we take a pop off of, but I couldn't really... I uh, couldn't really decide which one. Now the thing about orbital bombardment is when you have it set to, in this case, full ground support, they lose 100... Uh, points of fortifications per day. So that's how you can judge how long it'll take to fully bombard the planet and make it ready for invasion. In this case, we do 100 damage per day, so uh, this one had 4,400 uh, fortifications. So 44 days to complete the bo orbital bombardment. If you think about it, can you imagine if we got... Invaded by, well, not really invaded, but uh, blockaded by aliens today. And they began a 44 day long orbital bombardment. That would just be nuts. I mean, to be fair, uh, World War II, the Enemy um, planet secured. bombing of London lasted, what was it, 52 days? I can't remember. Oh, 50 days. Okay, there you go. Now go bomb the next planet, please. And is that a transport fleet? No. But what are you doing? Following, merging with fourth stellar cluster. All right, well, you do that. Still don't really know what these guys are doing. Ooh, they're getting in a fight with the Prothoran, though. Not gonna go well for him. Maybe once we finish bombing these planets and whatnot and we're at peace with them, we can just go. Alright, let's go take out these fleets that are in their space. Alright, fortifications. Need another 30 days. Still think I should have just sent our cruisers in here to do this stuff, though. But, uh, oh well. Okay, it should be done. Uh, 
Uh, any more fortifications? Yep, down to zero. So let's take the transport fleet. Land your armies, please. Seventy-six thousand minerals. Jeez. I'm gonna build another. Uh, I'm gonna build another ten cruisers. I don't, like, I'm not really planning to build up so many cruisers that to the point where they can stand up against a Prothoran fleet on their own. Because that's not what they're for. There's, we have more than enough to wipe out the military stations that they'll have to push through. Enemy planet secured. There we go. Mission accomplished. Good work. All right, combat, embark all again. There we go. Following the battlers. Okay. And these guys are flying back over here to bomb the same damn planet again. Whatever. All right, we're going to move on to the next system over here in Navi. This was the last one that we wanted to liberate. There's only one planet in there. Hopefully we can do this quickly. Because we have significantly bigger fish to fry. I once did the Corvette challenge. Yes, I haven't entirely done that myself. Uh, now, was it Corvettes only, or was it naked Corvettes only? That's my question. Which one did you do, uh, Raptor? Nope. Mineral silo is not in use. Uh, okay, so... Shoot. Let's move this guy. Construction complete. There we go, and we got a bunch more uh, cruisers coming in to regroup with the exterminators. Battlers. Uh, so yeah, Raptor God, was it? Uh, did you build just Corvettes, but you were able to like design them however you wanted and update them and stuff, or did you do naked Corvettes? I am genuinely curious. Oh no. That station actually did a little bit of damage. We're going to see how much. <laughs> uh, it did 4,000 damage to shields, and that's it. Okay. No need for repairs, then. Woohoo! Okay, so let's get our armies to uh, get in orbit of the planet. There we go. Now, there's a military fleet in this system that just warped in. Oh, never mind. I thought they were going to come over to the Navi system as well, but uh, they know better. Alright, fortifications. About another month. A little less than that, really. So we got to be getting... Uh, oh, here we go. Dyson Sphere panels installed. Beautiful. I was just about to check on that. Here we go. Next section. 2770 days. Oh, man. And even with spending that 40,000... Ah, oh, nice. Look at that. Plus 57 energy. And we're not even done that Dyson Sphere yet. Uh, here's another test that we're going to do. Let's move our cruisers. Okay, yeah, we're in the negative when we move the cru uh, when we move all of our military ships. But just a little bit. So the next section of the Dyson Sphere will keep us in the positive. That'll be fantastic. Okay, combat. We should be able to attack now. Yep, zero fortifications. Attack. Go. Enemy planet secured. And embark them all. Now the United Rothak pack, we wanted to make them a tributary, but do we need to invade them for that? I should hope not. That would really suck. All right, let's get the battlers to return, and we're going to use the exterminators now for the next part. Uh, because I don't really see the reason to move our battleships all over the place. 
excuse me. I'm starting to get a little stuffy for some reason. Well, that's not true. We want our battlers to go uh, battle the Prothoran, right? Let's uh, let's move them in here first. Go do your thing. They're going to warp right on top of this military station and take out everything in sight. Sixth Stellar Cluster. Where are you guys going? Oh, okay. Situation log updated. There we go. So our fleet's warped in. That's where I want them. Now, the exterminators, you guys, are going to be going after this little hostile invasion force. There you go. Situation log updated. Situation log updated. Evade there we go. Hostile fleet. Are you excited for the territory system and look? And look, they added with Apocalypse. Um, I've voiced my... Um, not really complaints, I, but I've voiced what I don't really like about it. Um, I like the idea of putting down a single um, expansion station and whatnot, and you can control the systems around it, as opposed to you build a starbase exactly in a system, uh, one that you want to control and whatnot. Uh, I do understand why they did that, and it allows for more uh, dynamic kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the territories are, like, they'll switch hands. The star bases will switch hands, so you'll see the territories change a lot more significantly when you are uh, with that particular system, when you're at war. Um... Am I excited for it? Eh, that's not the term I'd station use. Under attack. Mining station lost. Well, that's just not cool. Why are you destroying my mining stations? Situation log updated. Station under attack. Come on, guys. Catch up to him, please. There we go. Wipe him out. Situation log updated. Nice try. GTFO. <laughs> oh, we got another fleet coming in. Get our cruisers after those guys. Sick them, boys! Now, how about these guys? Are these guys coming in too? No, they're uh, just kind of chilling. Um, as for the look with Apocalypse, uh, eh, it seems okay. I'm not. I'm not as concerned with the look, to be totally honest. Uh, can we negotiate yet? Let's, uh... Well, we can humiliate them, but that's all they'll accept. Oh, yeah! There we go, get massacred. We got two Corvettes going to try and run a problem here. There's a lot of th there's a lot of things that have been updated uh, that I am looking forward to, and there's a, there's several things that I am not looking forward to um, with certain future updates. Um, 
most uh, a bu like with Apocalypse, I'm kind of half and half. Uh, I like the new stuff that they bring with us being able to build Titans and Colossus and st and things like that. I don't really like the territory we rework. Um, oh, jeez, we jeez, they're preparing to Construction come to this part of the galaxy, I guess. That's not a good sign. Um, yeah, that's how I feel. That's how I feel on that. Synthetic Dawn. Yeah, there's almost nothing in that that I do not want. Um, playing, being able to play as uh, machine empires will be pretty awesome. And uh, you know what? We're gonna enact the infrastructure project products projects uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, infrastructure projects edict we're going to do that and then we'll start building these mining networks um, honestly I'd be perfectly happy with getting just humanoids and synthetic dawn at this point um, if we get anything at all because synthetic dawn adds a lot of customization and whatnot uh, and replayability by being able to play as machine empires and humanoids adds customization uh, by giving us like more humanoids portraits and whatnot I mean and I know it's not a big deal to some people but I would I just like the options of uh, being able to build more unique and diverse fleets or not fleets um empires excuse me Blew. There is a lot of Prothoran fleets right here. Holy crap. I think we might have taken way too long. That's the impression I'm getting. We simply took too long, and now with all these fleets on our doorstep, look at the Great Cundin Coalition. Look at what they have been reduced to. And the Valdari Mediators are only down to a few systems as well. Jeez. I'm, I am not thinking of merging the fleets. No, they have specific uses. The fleet of the cruisers, uh, because, they're, because they should be better at getting away, like in the same star system, they should be better at getting away from Prothorn fleets to kind of FTL out. Uh... Yelong Guardians, what do I want to do with you guys? Can I fucking wipe you guys out? Sorry, pardon my French. I'm probably going to have to. Our console getting the humanoid in 2020 trailer. Honestly, I don't know what console is getting. Uh, it's safe to assume that humanoids will be coming, though, because there were several clips... Um, it wasn't specifically from the Humanoids uh, Species Pack DLC trailer. What it was is you would see a clip from, say, Distant Stars or something like that uh, of, like, a science ship flying towards a star or, or whatnot. But it was a Humanoids-style ship is what the deal was. So, I mean, it's kind of safe to guess that, yeah, we very well might be. I would like that. I think that would be awesome. There's a couple good tracks in the Humanoids trailer in the Humanoids DLC as well. Revamped tracks from uh, previous expansions. Well, here we go. Uh, let's take a look see here now. The Scourge of the Void. 96 infested worlds. Oh, man. It's not looking good. It's not looking good, folks. I do agree. I think that there is not much cosmetic options and stuff like that in the console version and would like to see more of it. Uh, I mean, the base game has a pretty good amount. Uh, Plantoids obviously helps with that big time, but it would be nice to get those humanoid ship, those humanoid ship types because they do... Like, visually, they look very appealing. They look very cool. Subject integration begun. Uh, you're a little late with that, bro. 
What do we got here? Research okay. complete. Uh, flash coolant. Okay, cool. Now we can do uh, flash coolant nine. Heck yeah. All right, so we'll get the battlers to take out that particular Prothorn fleet, then we'll move them to the Guinegan system, take out these military stations, and that should hopefully draw a few Prothorn fleets uh, towards us gradually, you know, kind of like one at, one at a time. We don't want them coming at us in one big blob of multiple fleets. That would really suck. All right. Time for a real fight on our hands. Yep, there's that battleship that ran out and died, because why not? Let's take off this rally point. Small weapons are really are like better at hitting their targets, way better at hitting the targets and making sure that they that we uh, kill the smaller Prothoran ships. I do like that about them. But uh, yeah, I'm all for more cosmetic options. That would be that's that's really cool. A few, some more humanoid portraits, humanoid-looking ships. Um, of course, the lithoids came out for PC just recently as well. That'd be neat to have. Um, it's been a long time since they did a species pack on the PC. I just realized what time it is, actually. I'm going to stream for about another 20 minutes so that we hit the two-hour mark on this one. Uh, again, if you're watching this on YouTube, like I said, uh, let me know how you feel. Uh, if you want to try and see us like actually take on the Prothoran Scourge in this playthrough and whatnot, and just you know have me keep going... Uh, or if you're like, no, it's okay. I wouldn't mind seeing you try something different uh, at this stage. Um, I tend, personally, when I'm playing my single player games, I tend to like, not so much give up. I just kind of stop playing them usually around the 200 mark because I don't really want to. Ooh, shoot. Okay, we got fleets going in there. Ooh, no, 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 no. You need to stay here. Go down here, go down here. Uh, anyways, like I was saying, I tend to stop around the 200 year mark because I want to. Uh, oh man, we. Oh man, see, this is what I mean. This is we're bringing we're bringing lots of Prothoran fleets in, but there's a whole freaking gaggle of them. Five, I think. Well, there's four for sure, but there's at least a definitely a fifth one at least coming in as well, and it's because we're in their space. This little star system is under their control so you put a fleet there and it's like oh you're invading our territory get out of here they don't like that at all i'm wondering if i should move the cruisers over there to assist we'll see remadon you know what i should do is on a remadon core i should have gotten that retired navy officer leader on here to reduce the ship build time here this guy let's put him on there okay how much how long to build a battleship 164 days that's fairly quick oh look see more prothoran fleets coming in oh man all right we're gonna get our gonna get our ships out of here because that's just looking scary that is, jeez, I can't even count from here. What's it say? Uh, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12 fleets. <laughs> and there's still more coming. Holy crap. Uh, 
Uh, okay, we got a building that does not have a pop on it. That's fine. Uh, now we need to... Uh, we can't just do that. We need to get these guys away from the jump point as well. So move down here, please. Um, anyways, like, yeah, like I was saying, let, you know, if you if you watch this all on YouTube, let me know if you'd like to see us keep like keep trying to fight against the Prothoran Scourge in this particular uh, game. Me, I wouldn't mind moving on to a different um, a different stream game just so that I could try something totally different, like maybe Naked Corvettes only or like One Planet Challenge or something like that. Um, not that I not that I dislike this playthrough, but like I said, usually when I'm playing offline on my single player games, I tend to uh, basically abandon those ones around the 200 to 300 year mark um, when I have the crisis events on, because by that point, because by by like the 250 close to 300 year mark, they've you know the unbidden or whoever's come in they've taken over like half the galaxy and nobody can stand up against them and stuff like that and it's like man do i really want to go through this super long slog of taking them on and all that jazz and it's like eh not not really not this time 90 percent of the time it's like eh, not this time the time the times i do try you know takes uh takes several days over the court you know well, I should say numerous hours over the course of several days where I do I do try, uh, but in the end I get ground down and don't win it out. I'll be honest, I'm just not very good at this game. I still haven't beaten an in-game crisis yet. Part of the problem is that I have a habit of sitting back and trying to build up my fleets, and then you get a situation like this where the Prothoran Scourge has so many planets and so many fleets. They have 96 infested worlds. It's like, man, I don't think we're, we have a chance now. Like, there's no way. <laughs> Look at all these bloody fleets they have. Okay, let's see here. Can we negotiate? Um, Construction complete. Yeah, let's just liberate these two planets for the hell of it. Oh, maybe not. Okay, fine. We'll liberate that one planet, and then we'll humiliate them. Eh, yeah, there you go. Incoming transmission. Planet liberated, and they have been humiliated. This war has raged on for too long. Federation invitation. Really? To the Honmer hierarchy. <laughs> So by liberating that one planet, we have created the Hanmer hierarchy. Uh, personally, I would like to start a new playthrough, and I actually want to stream a one planet challenge because I've done uh, the last couple months. I've done several. That's been a lot of my single player playthroughs lately. I've actually the last four have been one planet challenge. Um, I just did the one after the other, getting better at it, uh, getting more efficient at it and uh, it's a lot of fun I find okay so here's what we're gonna do we are going to take our battlers fleet try to knock out a couple per thorn per thorn groups uh, why do you not have a rally point well that's really really stupid I wanted you merging. There we go. Okay, so head over this way. Help out. Oh, no, no, no. Don't go that way. Holy crap. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Bad, 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 bad. Go this way. Need to go through Hanmer space to engage some of the fleets in their, in their area. Um, honestly, I really think that I should take these guys, knock out the Yalon Guardians. But hey, if we get our battleships up here in this part of space, we might have a chance here, because their fleets are over here. It takes a while to get around that way. 
Blah, 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 blah. What's going on? There's a Prothoran fleet. Can they handle these transport ships? Yeah, they're taking them down. Very, very slowly, but they're taking them down. So let's go after... Uh, where did that star brood go? Huh. I don't know. It's like they just... It's like they disappeared. Okay, exterminators. Y'all are going to do your thing. Come on over here. Research Need the battlers to get into this area. Because there is an infested world in the Koval system that we need to take care of. Uh, what do we got here? Eh, let's do... I don't know. Let's do synchronized firing patterns for our military stations. Nothing too spectacular. Oh, we are about to get Administrative Efficiency 7 so we can get rid of our last sector. That'll be awesome. No more sectors. No more sectors. You know, I'm not... I'm really not concerned the least bit that we lost a couple stations earlier. We're producing four points less society research, three, po three less minerals... And the League of Non-Aligned Powers voted to kick the Great Kundun Coalition. Wow. They're like, yeah, you, you're you're weak now. You, you've you been consumed too much, so screw you. <laughs> what a bunch of jerks. All right, how are we doing on producing this? 1,500 days. Migration treaty broken. Migration treaty broken. Yeah, they are just hanging those guys out to dry now. Poor Great Cundin Coalition. For so long, they were such a power within the galaxy. Actually, hang on. That's a bad idea. I don't care for the Swarm Strikers. Uh, let's do... Choo -choo -choo -choo. Yeah, let's do Sentient Resource Management. Federation Association offer to the Great Cundin Coalition. Yeah, okay. And there is a rivalry between the Valdari and the Great Cundin Coalition again. Shocker. All right, let's get a scientist. A uh, custom AI assistant would be pretty good. However, there is one. Where is he? Ooh, Maniacal plus Voidcraft would be pretty good, actually. There we go. And now I need to... I forget which freaking science ship he was in. What is this guy doing? Why is he just chilling? You were supposed to be assisting research there, my friend. And so are you. That's be uh, You know what? It's because they were trying to evade the hostile fleet that came after us that one time uh, fairly recently. Alright, gotta find the science ship without somebody in it. Oops. This one. Uh, now, I do believe we have to recruit somebody new. So let's get the guy with the custom AI assistant, because that's a pretty good uh, scientific trait to have. And then all the other science ships have somebody in there. Okay, cool. Another rivalry coming in. Valdari Mediators and Great Cundin Coalition. Shocker. <laughs> Those guys haven't liked each other this this whole time. It's kind of amusing. Okay, there is a fleet battle that's about to happen. First things first, though. Let's go ahead and upgrade our mining networks. Then we might as well upgrade the mineral silo since we don't have uh, 10 pops. Not quite yet, but pretty close. Okay, let's see. What's going on here? Hello. Oh, no. They have reinforcements coming. Yes, they do. 
Yes, they do. Oh, no. They infested that world way quicker than I expected. That's not good. Okay, battlers, you guys need to go back to uh, passive. And then escape. Run away! Oh man, they have so many fleets now. Alright, exterminators. Go help out over here. Oh, what just happened? Oh, they warped right on top of us. <laughs> I was kind of expecting that to happen a little bit, but uh, I don't know. Hopefully another fleet doesn't warp on top of us, but I think they're going to anyways. Let's get the exterminators in there. Let's let's get them helping out. <laughs> Give them a hand, boys. Now, as for our transport ships, we're just going to pull them back. You guys can stop. Oh, another fleet warped in. This is looking bad. Hang on. There we go. Okay. How are we doing? We're down to 126 battleships. Oh, here comes another one, but it's a very small one. Interesting. Come on, cruisers. Oh my goodness! Yep, it's time to leave. GTFO, boys. Retreat! Oh no, the exterminators are in big trouble now. 26 days before emergency. I think the cruisers are going to get obliterated now. And if they don't get obliterated, they're going to take heavy losses before we can emergency FTL. That's what I get for uh, shifting my attention away so quickly, though. They're actually doing a bit of damage right now. That's interesting. Come on. Starting to lose some cruisers, though. Six days. Hang tight. We're probably going to lose about ten of them. That's that's fine. That's more than acceptable. Three. Two. One. Get out of there. Alright, now the transport fleet. You guys also need to vamanos. Yep. Evading hostile fleet. <laughs> See ya. Yeah, they're coming in because they started infesting these worlds over here as well. So, oh man. Where are my battleships? Yeah, they're protecting their assets because they just invaded these... Or sorry, they just infested these worlds, so they just have a boatload of fleets coming in now. Oh, man. This is ugly. All right, you guys need to come back and start repairing. Back to a Remedon core it is. Now, as for the exterminators, same thing. Back to Arimadon Core. All right, let's see. We lost 12 battleships and 15 cruisers. That's easy to rebuild. Start with the battleships. Set a rally point on them. Okay. Starting at MacGruber. One. Two, three. Twelve. There 
we go. And, oh yeah, we can get rid of this sector now, too. Uh, got distracted. Select, manage sector, and... Okay. Are you sure you want to remove LTR from the sector for 25 influence? Yes, I do. And we have no more sectors. Look at that. Good stuff. Okay, uh, and with that, it has been exactly two hours. Oh my god, our newts are starting to colonize this world. We have nothing on it. Oops. <laughs> um, yeah, hang on. Very close to a tenth pop from the looks of things. Anyways, um, that's going to sum it up for tonight. Um, we averted disaster. That could have gone really bad. We would have lost everything there. But, uh, yeah. Looks like they started infesting a couple other worlds in this little cluster of systems here, and that's why all these fleets just started moving in en masse. Oh, man. There's so many of them now. 101 infested worlds. See, that's the problem... Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Snap, Snap, Crackle, Glock. Much appreciated. That's the problem with uh, chilling and just not. Ooh, 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 ooh. You guys need to get out of Dodge, Mister Transport Fleet. Um, like I said, like I keep trying to say, that's the problem with ignoring. Uh, not just the Prothoran Scourge, but pretty much any endgame crisis for a while is like if you just wait to try to and it's like well I'll need to build up my forces before I can take them on um, the problem with doing that is they get more powerful the longer you take is the issue especially the scourge like look at how many fleets they have now they're all over the place any anytime we try to thrust into their territory and whatnot they just have a bunch of fleets right there to meet us head on and it's uh, straight up disgusting. Anyways, I'm going to call it a night there. So I, I will uh, go ahead and uh, edit this to prep for uploading and making public on YouTube. So if you did watch this on YouTube, I very much appreciate you watching. Um, not as exciting as the last one. We got into... Very little, almost no fights against the Prothoran this time around, actually, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, but yeah, let me know. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. And this has been Moby's Y playing Stellaris Console Edition. To those of you who came by to watch live, really appreciate it. Uh, Raptor God, Snap Crackle Glock, and a couple others who were uh, talkative this evening. Jeremy G Gaming, always nice to see you as well. Um, those of you who came and watched on YouTube, if you'd like to see more Stellaris Console Edition content, subscribe to the channel and dingle my dongle so you're notified when you see more videos go live. Check out my playlists, uh, Let's Play Stellaris Console Edition, and of course the Tips and Strategies playlist. Um, also, the links in the description below, my Twitter feed, great way to keep in touch with me and stay tuned if I have to cancel or postpone a stream. Uh, my Twitch channel, which I streamed this off of, Come by and watch live. I tend to stream Stellaris Console uh, most every Tuesday night. Uh, it's kind of become my unofficial Stellaris Console Edition stream night. Although, be aware, uh, I think it's two weeks from now, on December 3rd, I have a family member birthday party to attend, so that won't be happening. Um, but yeah, uh, check check me out on Twitch, give me a follow, and I'll let you know when I... and you can, Come drop by when I go live. I'll pl I do play some other games on this as well. And last but not least, the Discord channel. Drop in. There's uh, We've got about 40 members now. And I'm pretty sure everybody came in due to my Stellaris Console Edition content. So you can talk with other players. We have some from both Xbox and PS4 if you want to try and set up a multiplayer game. Or if you want to discuss things. Um, and get, a, get a p other people's opinions on the game uh, for certain strategies and whatnot. Um, or just uh, glean ideas off of people. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope to see you again real soon. Have a great night, and enjoy the rest of the week.